Hey everybody, I'm Will Kostak. I'm a first year medical oncology fellow at University of Chicago. And today I'll be talking briefly about some of the disparities that we see across prostate cancer, right? If you think about some of the disparities across cancer, there's a lot of different ones that you're going to see. Specifically in prostate cancer, you see that African American men are 60% more likely to get prostate cancer than white men, and that the death rate is more than double as per the latest report from the American Cancer Society. But even looking beyond race, even things like zip code can affect your cancer risk. And uh, we find that men who are from poorer areas are 31% more likely to be diagnosed with advanced prostate cancer. And just thinking about why that might happen is because early detection is crucial for prostate cancer, but not everybody has access to screening. And we also see that men who are uninsured are only half as likely to get tested for a PSA compared to someone who's with, who has insurance. And of course, being diagnosed much later with the cancer is much harder to treat, leads to worse outcomes and worse survival, right? And even after diagnosis, not all men will receive the same level of care. It was actually found that African-American men are 21% less likely to receive definitive treatment compared to white men with similar cancer characteristics. And this gap persists even when you account for things like age and overall health status, right? But one of the really interesting things beyond this, even looking at the fact that from detection to diagnosis to treatment, looking beyond those disparities, is that there was a multiple cohort study of 300,000 patients with prostate cancer which found that black race was not associated with inferior prostate cancer specific mortality in cohorts for randomized control trials that were sponsored by the VA health system and by the National Cancer Institute, whereas it was associated with increased prostate cancer mortality within this year database. What this is basically telling us is that when you look at stuff that's going on on the ground and real world data, of course, these disparities are there. But if you actually give black men similar access to care and standardized treatment, then black men with non-metastatic prostate cancer have stage for stage prostate cancer specific mortality that's comparable to those for white men. So basically what that's telling us is that if you try to work in equity and access, that we can actually get rid of some of these disparities and we have data to sort of show that. Beyond sort of just sort of generally improving access to care, what specific things can we do with prostate cancer to improve outcomes and improve, improve equity? The first thing that we can really think about is our choice of therapy. Right. Um, of course, you know, we've been treating prostate cancer for a long time, and we have a lot of drugs that have very well established long term safety profiles. Given the large number of men who have prostate cancer that's hormone sensitive, and given the prolonged duration of therapy, I think both patients and payers tend to benefit from therapies that are cheaper and also effective in the long term, and specifically using abiraterone instead of um, only using androgen receptor blockers, which could sometimes cost hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. Uh, and of course, you know, abiraterone went off patent in 2018, which means that more generic versions are, are now available. And there's also some discussion about sort of off-label dosing and different ways to adjust, adjust the dose of low-fat meals that provide similar efficacy. So thinking about dose adjustments to help reduce the cost can be something that, uh, you know, that, that prostate oncologists work on. And as I mentioned before, you know, these therapies have a long duration of treatment and you don't just think about financial toxicity for these patients, you think about time toxicity, all the appointments, scheduling scans, um, having to talk to a provider, getting care from loved ones, things of that nature. And another aspect where we can kind of work on to improve time toxicity is looking at how to modify uh, you know, stereotactic body, body radiation. It can be delivered in various time frames, from once a week to the more commonly used uh, every other day schedule, uh, which, which completes your treatment within, within two weeks. And if, when you use that schedule, you actually cut down your treatment duration by 50 to 75% compared to longer treatment courses. And I think in the United States, if we, you know, sort of going with bundled payment, then, then billing for fraction can actually incentivize shorter treatment courses, which would lead to a great number of patients who could be treated while reducing the resource use per patient. So once again, sort of improving our overall resource utilization within the larger health system. So just you know, sort of reviewing what we talked about today, you know, we mentioned that there are disparities in prostate cancer in terms of race when it comes to detection, when it comes to screening, when it comes to diagnosis, and when it comes to treatment, but also that these things can be mitigated with sort of a sufficient access to care, and also that there are specific strategies that we can use, such as prioritizing use of abiraterone, and also modifying the dosing for radiation, to sort of minimize the time and financial toxicity that patients have to sort of undergo. Thanks for listening.